this is going to be a two part video. And in these two parts, you will see a bit of a direction that some of these new series will take. One will focus on historical events, which are created as precedents or seen as precedents to the upcoming tribulation and who is behind the scenes, including who will ultimately turn into the Antichrist system. The other part is a series of teachings, which are warnings in anticipation for the rapture. And all of these are signs that we should be watching for that the Lord is teaching us about so that we are prepared. The message I received on April 15 of 2023, and please pay attention to the April 15, especially for the second part of the message. The message came at 7.52 p.m. The message says, Fear not, son, I am with you. Then the Lord says, Now look up the strong. By then the clock is on 7.53. So 7.53 in strong means architecton, which means a master builder or an architect. And many of you know that I am an architect by trade. The message says, Fear not, son, for the time has come. And you shall, in parentheses, fear no longer. I will give you a sign, son, pay attention. Then I looked up the 752, which is the original time, Strong's. And the meaning is ruler of the synagogue. Fear not, son, you're with me and I rule all things. Abide in me, for without me you cannot do nothing in parentheses not I am the in parentheses your way the life the truth and there is no truth outside of me then I have a vision of the bottom of black spiked soccer or baseball shoes there is no more time sun right for my words are truth and understanding for the world understands not, for he seeks not. I rule with a rod of iron. Nazi Germany, an empire, strikes again. Beware of the deception, son, for I teach you all things. The blood of the Lamb, right son, he cleanses all things. And there is no salvation outside of me, son. Learn the parable of the fig tree, son, and all trees. For time is a hand and calling all to repentance. Sound the alarm, son, for the trumpet will, in parentheses, sound, blow. For I am long-suffering and wish that none should perish. The time is now, there is no more time. The books are closing, right, son, that I come quickly. I am at the door. Fear not, rest not, time is short. I love you, son. Retire now, Lord Jesus, Yeshua, Abba, Holy Spirit. Amen. In the message, the Lord mentions to go and look the strong for 752. And that is the ruler of the synagogue. And then later on in the message, the, the Lord says, I rule all things. And then down says, I rule with a rod of iron. So it was clear that the ruler of the synagogue uh, was something to look into. And as he was teaching me, of course, um, the ruler of the synagogue we know to be Jairus. And so Jairus's daughter is one of the four miracles of resurrections resurrection that the Lord performs and so one is Jairus's daughter the second is the widow's son Lazarus and then himself the Lord Jesus so the Lord had me understand and look what was coming about these four events so in all of these four accounts one of the things that we notice is that the Lord always or often will say weep not so that's the case of Jairus' daughters, for example, where the Lord says, weep not. The same thing happens when the Lord has compassion 
and uh, for the widow's son and he tells her we've not that's the luke 7 13 it says and when the lord saw her he had compassion on her and said unto her weep not now when we went to lazarus account we notice that it is the lord himself in this case weeping and so in john 11 13 the verse says jesus wept now in the fourth account which is the resurrection it is Mary who's weeping. And so in John 20, 11, it says, But Mary stood without at the sepulcher weeping. And then as we continue the account, uh, first the two angels ask Mary, Why are you weeping? And the Lord himself tells Mary, Woman, why do you weep? Who do you seek? So the first idea is that in all of these four resurrections accounts, the first concept that we see is that a weeping out of sorrow and hopelessness, as if there is nothing else to do. Uh, it is dead or she is dead and there is no more hope. It is not, there's nothing we can do about it. But yet the Lord says, why are you weeping? The second component that the Lord had me notice in this four account was the idea of sleeping. And in that particular um, context, what the Lord, uh, makes people understand is that these are not dead but they are sleeping that's a case in uh, Jairus's daughters where in Luke 8 52 the Lord says she sleeps and then in the Lazarus account in uh, John 11 11 the Lord will say he's sleeping and then in John 11 14 he says no now he is dead so is making us understand that there is a component of sleeping that goes along with this idea of the resurrection. So then he had further uh, made me study that this concept of sleeping happened again right before two other forms of resurrection. So that happens in the account of the transfiguration, for example, in Luke 9.32, where it says, But Peter and they that were with him were heavy with sleep, and when they were awake, they saw his glory, and the two men stood with him. So they're already at the transfiguration site, but yet they fall asleep right before the transfiguration. And then we went into the cross and resurrection account. And uh, in Matthew 26, 40, it says, And he comes unto the disciples, and he finds them asleep, and said unto Peter, What could you not watch with me one hour? Watch and pray that you enter not into temptation, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. So in both these accounts, I want you to notice that they are sleeping right before, shortly before what? The miracle of the transfiguration, the miracle of the resurrection. Right before the transformation, right before the resurrection, they're sleeping. And the same way that right before the miracle of the resurrection, the Lord says they are sleeping. So we want to notice that there's a relation between right before the resurrection, right before the miracle, they are sleeping. So what the Lord is teaching us is right before the transfiguration, the resurrection, or the rapture, the sleepy comes in and the weeping comes in. This is a warning that the Lord is saying there is a time of sleepiness, slumber, weariness, of letting go of that fire and watching and praying, like the Lord said to the disciples in Matthew 26, 40, watch and pray. And like he's teaching us in Luke 21, 36, watch and pray always. But he's saying, otherwise, you'll be sleeping. Who else is sleeping? The ten virgins in Matthew 25, they all fell asleep. When? Right before the midnight cry. The Lord is saying, right before the rapture, right before the resurrection, there will be a time of sleeping and a time of weeping. So the Lord is giving us a warning and the teaching is to remind us that, yes, there is a sleepiness that's starting to creep into the body of Christ. This sleepiness is mentioned and portrayed in every account of resurrection and as well as a transfiguration, which is a warning for us to say, 
do not fall asleep, but also notice that when the sleepiness comes in, when the hopelessness comes in, the, we are so close. The weariness as, and the weeping as well are part of the same picture. A time of sorrow and a time of sleepiness are just short of the rapture. So this is an encouragement, brothers and sisters, to stay vigilant, to watch and pray intercede, to share the gospel, to focus a lot less on the actual day and the actual hour and the minute of the rapture, but to know that we're in the season. This is why the Lord is sharing this wisdom. This is not my wisdom. This is a teaching from the Lord that I share with you. This is not my doing. I say it. this. I'm not here for my merit. I'm simply being obedient to what the Lord is sharing. I want everybody to understand that this teaching is meant for us to, to understand that when we see the sleepiness coming in, when we think that is not happening, we finally think it's not happening. That means it's truly at the door. I hope this was encouraging. Watch out for part two, which will speak about a different topic still related to what we're about to enter into. And I hope this was a blessing and an encouragement. In Jesus' name, amen.